Welcome back. Concerns over the fiscal crisis in Greece weighing on the markets this morning. But according to our next guest, the answer to Europe's problems could be as simple as printing more money or adding something on a spreadsheet there and lots of it. Joining us now, Warren Mosler, founding partner of AVM Securities. Warren. Morning. All right, we don't have a whole lot of time to do your okay. book and your whole thesis, which is no. exactly the opposite of what everyone thinks. Deficits are not a problem. Have at it. Right. Well, getting to the answer first. The answer for the European Union is, a, uh, is an operational answer, and that is that the uh, ECB, my proposal is that the ECB makes a uh, distribution on a per capita basis to all the governments of 5% uh, of uh, current Euro GDP per, per year, or approximately, uh, they could start with by announcing a trillion dollar distribution on a per capita basis to all the member nations. Uh, this will ease debt concerns, okay? It won't increase spending, that's already limited by the uh, Stability and Growth Pact. And by making it an annual payment, uh, it gives them a, an interesting lever because they can now, any country that doesn't comply with their instructions, they can just withhold the payment the next year. It's much easier to withhold a payment than it is to impose a penalty. But hold on, because the yeah. concern is going to be that the government the interest rates for issuing EU debt will skyrocket, that they won't be able to pay for this. Well, no, when the EU makes a payment, there is no associated debt. It's just a distribution, and it's booked as a, uh, you know, a negative and a payable to the um, European Parliament account or whatever they have as a... Uh, Talk about your general idea here that we have the concept of debts wrong, that, that the government, there really is no constraint as far as you're concerned in terms of the government printing money. Yeah, well, my, look, my, right now we're faced with an obvious uh, um, enormous lack of aggregate demand in the country. We've gone to extreme measures, to what we think are extreme measures, trying to do something about it, zero interest rates, quantitative easing, that type of thing. The obvious answer is a simply a full payroll tax holiday, which has been proposed. But then the question comes up, what about the revenues? How are you going to pay for it? And the answer to that is you have to first look at what actually happens operationally when the government taxes. And so, and you can see it on your uh, screen at home when you uh, have $5,000 in your account on your, um, uh, um, in, your, in your bank account and, and you uh, write a check to the government for $1,000. Well, what happens? Okay, the government, the 5000 suddenly changes to 4000 All the government does is change the number down in your account. Okay, they don't get anything. There's no gold coin that drops into any box at the uh, Internal Revenue Service or anything like that. They're just changing numbers down. Taxing, when you have a floating exchange rate, non-convertible currency, taxing functions to regulate aggregate demand. It doesn't actually collect revenue. And so we look at, well, how does the government spend if it's not uh, taking in revenue through taxing or getting anything? And government spends simply by changing numbers up in uh, someone's account. Now, did you bring that slide from, uh, I wish I could do that okay. in my personal checking so, account. I just yeah. Well, you and I can't do that. Around and pretend. Right. You and I can't do that. But that's all the government can do. When uh, Chairman Bernanke was asked by uh, Pelly last May, "Where's this hundreds of billions of dollars coming from that's going to the banking system?" He said, "Well, they have accounts at the Fed, and we just mark up the numbers in their accounts." And that's exactly how all government spending is done. There's no distinction but between. But doesn't that them. catch up with you at some point? I mean, can't you get away with that for a length of time? But at some point, David, doesn't don't you think it catches up? Look, I, I, I think that um, the real problem is that, and I, I think what Warren's trying to say to a certain extent is that you need to create incentives to have people go out and produce more and hire more and do more. Mm -hmm. um, and simply expanding debt doesn't do that. Simply expanding spending, if it doesn't lead to productive activities, doesn't do that either. Uh, what you need is an incentive system uh, to, to, to accomplish that. And I think there's a difference between private sector debt and public sector debt as well. And you know, the real problem right now on a global basis is there's too much debt. And the productive output of the global economy or the vast bulk of the global economy can't support the current debt load, right. can't grow fast enough. And one way or the other, that's going to have to be extinguished through default, through restructuring, or through inflating it away. And that, that's the end of the story. Or through a very long period of very slow growth, the, 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 the workout period, which is what we appear to be opting for now in the United States. It's what the Japanese opted for mistakenly 20 years ago. Uh, and, and you can change the accounts, but at the end of the day, either you're going to have growth or you're not going to have growth. And I think that's the critical issue. Look, the, f the federal government neither has nor doesn't have dollars. It never has or doesn't have dollars. It's the scorekeeper. It spends by changing numbers up in bank accounts and it taxes by changing numbers down. Okay, and so, it, it, you know, that, 
it's, it's not the issue. Now, if you, the, the, the other thing that's out there is, okay, what, and if you ask any congressman, what we don't get from um, taxing, we're going to have to borrow from China and, uh, you know, leave it for our children to pay back. So let's just take a quick look at what happened and how that actually works. So how does China get their money to begin with? Okay, they sell things to the United States. And how do they get paid? They get a credit in their reserve account at the uh, Federal Reserve, okay? Now, that, functionally, that's a checking account with a fancy name. It's the Federal Reserve Bank, so they call it a reserve account. Why does China buy treasury securities? Because they pay a little bit more interest. Uh, so when they buy treasury, now what is a treasury security? A treasury security is nothing more than a savings account at the Federal Reserve Bank. You give the Fed money, you get it back with interest. That's all it is. Okay. So when China buys treasury securities, what do we do? We debit their uh, reserve account and we credit their securities account. We move money from their checking account at the Fed to their securities account at the Fed, okay, to their savings account. And then when we pay them back, and, and if you look at the total federal debt of $13 trillion, it's nothing more than a $13 trillion in savings accounts at the Federal Reserve. Okay, and how do we pay that back? We do it every day. We, t we take the money out of their savings account, we put it back in their checking account. It has nothing to do with the guy spending so money. So you're saying we shouldn't be selling, selling Treasury debt out there now? What I'm saying we is... We should just be printing the money and crediting accounts. Okay. The term printing money is a distinction from gold standard and fixed exchange rate. I mean, that's not even an applicable distinction, right? Right. We have to look at what we actually do. This is the, what I'm talking about is the actual monetary operations. There's no other choice. This is how it's always been done and always will be done. Warren, let's just yeah. uh, call this a start in, okay. in, in, in trying to get your idea out in terms okay. of how uh, deficits work in your opinion. Right. Um, I'm sure it's really controversial, but thanks, Warren Moser. Okay. Uh, Becky. Well, still to come this morning, we will have more of the morning's top stories, plus one of President Obama.